He felt to get him saved and get in there. Go ahead and brother Bob so was good about that. He loves them discipling. Yeah. Well, he said he likes to use one on one discipling in his church. You know, one like well, one that's man what, with another that's man. What that's what it ought to be. That's what it sounds like the philosophy that you came with. Because you said with the Great Commission, make disciples. Yeah. It doesn't say just reach out to them. No, it doesn't just yeah. say unreached and reach them. But on one thousand, little by little, so I that's learned. a so that's a good transfer of your philosophy, your yeah. strategy, yeah. rather your strategy, yeah. to his well, church and his ministry. And he's got several workers from his church in the ministry, mm -hmm. which is good. They start out being active in his church, and then and then he's, he's helping find a place to try to be a pastor. Now. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I don't know where we got sidetracked. But um, no one go with to Raul. What was his name? Oh, Santos Nunes. Yeah, Santos yeah. Nunes. That yeah. right. He's my partner for twenty years. So then twenty six happened, years. What happened in Via Salvador when he left and you went and baptized people and everything? When you came back from the states, then mm. had to find another pastor or <laughs> unlike the Apostle Paul, he says, I baptize forgotten the name mm. one and two and he says yeah. I don't remember who else baptized all the others yeah, yeah. yeah and I don't prefer to baptize because I, I that's to that's to discount the value of a Peruvian pastor baptized yeah. <laughs> and I say I, I'll come to the baptism but I want the pastor to do the baptism so what happened with the church once he left? Who? The guy went to Rauda. Oh no, up in Rauda? No, what happened to the well, church? We baptized, we baptized 12 people, I think, in the in the ice water. <laughs> well, at, at 14,000 feet, the yeah. water just has two temperatures, <laughs> cold and ice. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Lake Titicaca is similar to that. Yeah. Did uh, you mention the Apostle Paul a lot? And it sounds like you pattern your <laughs> your style after what he did. I tent, never tent, did a tent making missionary. I never, but I never did think of it. Now. Prefer <laughs> not prefer not to baptize. Let others bat, let let those local well, pastors baptize. Uh, but I, and I that, was a green going. It was a yeah. big difference. And, and no, I, I wanted to to value the Peruvians. Right. And so... Yeah. Well, 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 where I was going with that was yeah. rather than, say, following tradition or what American missionaries normally did, it sounds like you just... And maybe you didn't do it intentionally. I don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe it's intentional, maybe it's accidental, but it sounds like you just studied the life of the Apostle Paul and just tried to make that your model. And because I see some of that in Pastor Barton's yeah. old church, the discipling, yeah. um, he told us the other day, I don't have to be in charge of everything as long as the work gets done. That's exactly what you're telling us that you did. That's that's your philosophy. So kind of see about, a, tra about, a transfer of ideas. Well, it was it's, it's it's easy for me to do that because I never felt like I had automatic power. Yeah. Just, uh, just, but even even today, that is not the philosophy of the of most of the American missionaries. Well, they want to come and dominate. You know, oh, but, yeah. But, but you want you the just want to do the Lord. Father, yeah, yeah, you just want to do the Lord's work, and I, I see that, Pastor. Parker so that, did this strain your relationship with other missionaries? I mean, no. did they think they were giving a bad example? Maybe. No. How did they take it? Well, they didn't tell me a whole lot, but. A lot of them thought, well, now, who's authorized to baptize? And I say, well, the church is functioning. It wasn't licensed and all that. And it wasn't, well, how do you define a local church anyway? Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. there's a good formal definition, which I think is a good idea. But there's also a group of people who meet in the name of the Lord regularly. That's more or less a church for me. Mm -hmm. Because I don't like the word church. Mm. I'd rather use the word an assembly. 
becomes the word church. Yeah. The worldwide universal church. When did they meet? Hmm. Do they support mission? Hmm. Do they have a pastor? The Pope? But I don't know. We don't recommend him. <laughs> the you universal see. comes from Catholicism. The word yes. Catholic means yes. universal. Yes. Well, if I believe in the universal church, I believe in the Catholic Church. <laughs> are, you, uh, are you familiar with Bogart Press and Texarkana? Because they're very local church. It's, it sounds almost exactly like they prefer Ecclesia rather than... It, they believe in local it's church only, no, yeah, yeah. no no universal church, only local church. I prefer assembly. Right. And I believe the assemblies of God have the right word. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think I'm right. <laughs> but like church authority to baptize, and, yeah. uh, I don't know, you, you just sound very, very local church, kind of like they are. And, well, I mean, that, that's kind of my I background, to personally. Prove, but I came to but, prove not under the... The same was authority yeah. of others. Well, I don't think that's the best way to do it, but it's just what I did. And so, after I've been here for a while, I decided, well, call me along Elizabeth. We better say, be a member of a mission in the United States. And so, I found a mission, well, actually close to my home in Jellico, uh, in Knoxville. Well, no, near Knoxville. Baptist International Outreach. Right. Yeah, right. Oh, so, yeah, we do the yeah. fire. Yeah. yeah. Well, the founder of that mission was in Ethiopia for years until the communists kicked them out. It started a church and started a deaf ministry there. A really good job. Anyway, Brother, Brother Dick. And so he accepted. We, we talked and we agreed on enough. And so. So uh, they accepted me to be a member of that mission mm -hmm. after I've been a missionary for about 20 years. It was mm -hmm. fine for me. Now, I don't suppose I did. I needed that kind of little reference. I was going to be more established and you know, expand a little bit. Well, we 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 incorporated the October mission before there was hardly anybody in the mission. But we incorporated because we were buying lots for churches. And you have to buy a lot in a, in a legalized, in a legal institution. And that's called personaria juridica in Peru. You have to have personaria juridica to sign the, the transfer deed. So the, somebody has to be owner of it. And personalia natural is a person individually, but personalia juridica is uh, an institution. And so I, just, I figured we'd better form personalia juridica. But how are you going to form it? Well, you have to have Peruvian members. And so uh, I said, okay, we'll do it. And so then I publicized to all the Baptist pastors I can find. <coughs> in those days, it must not have been more than 30, I suppose. But I want to, if you want to help me form a Peruvian mission with a Peruvian board of directors, meet me at a certain Baptist church here in the end. And so I thought, well, maybe six or eight pastors will come, and well, I'm with them, I can start them. I can get them part with it. We really just need three to get incorporated. So, uh, so we've been incorporated. And 30 something pastors, a whole pile of the pastors, well, a whole lot of the pastors came. And they said, We agree 100% that there be a Peruvian Baptist mission. And I said, That's what I'll help you do. And, we'll just get it and some of the pastors of some of the biggest Baptist churches came. In those days, Tom Pace's church in La Molina, I don't even think it existed. He was going mostly up, you know, he lived at Howha for, for 15 years anyway, maybe 20. He started in Chosica where I was. But I didn't start a church in Chosica. 
when he was with the missionaries that were working in Tosita, started going up to the mountains. So he, he can tell you his story, but we've always been friends. And he's always, how you say in Spanish, put up with me, so I'll go out there. Anyway, in English, he, he's been able to put up with me all these years. And we've gone up to the mountains together and preached and campaigns up in the mountains together. So he invited me to preach in his church one Sunday morning here in Molina. But I agree, I was the best preacher that ever came here. He's a really good preacher. Yeah, he is Andy Pace's uh, father, uh -huh. who's one of the last level in the Christian school. Uh -huh. And other Pace's, I think uh, Stephen is in the States pastor, and uh, they were actually born here. But they were not born here, they were born in Jauja. Now, Jauja is a place up in the Andes. And people that are born in Jauja have the reputation of being stubborn people, very laborious, you know, hardworking people. Uh, Andy, because he went to Pensacola. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> really? make a lot of difference. They're all good missionaries. We, we just, when we went to Spain last year, one of the missionaries that we visited in, in, um, in Rota, where there is an American base, he said, yes, come with the group. And then he called me and he said, a couple of churches have called me and they told me they would cut my support if you accept the, student, the mission team and we were going to be one week with him. And I'm like, really? Now he's a BIMI missionary. He, was, he wasn't like that. But a couple of churches told him, you take, if you receive Pensacola students, we would cut it possible. Mm -hmm. Calvin baptized by, by, by sprinkling, and he baptized babies. And Calvin was against the Baptist. So how can you be a Calvinist Baptist, more or less? Way in the history, uh, I came to Peru for one main reason. I wanted to serve the Lord and don't, don't tell all the Baptists this, <laughs> but God told me go to Peru. To Peru? Where's Peru? Well, I knew where it was, but what's Peru right? And all I could find in the encyclopedia was the, the natives from the jungle, practically. Hmm. I think the encyclopedia thought that the city, that the city was like any, any other, not like, more or less like any other city. Cars and lights and telephones and all that kind of stuff. And so they showed tribes. Mm. And so I knew almost nothing about Peru. I tried to learn. I'm an engineer. I've got a mechanical engineering mm. degree from Georgia Tech. Oh, oh. Mm. I like engineering and I like all, all things definite, technical. You're from Georgia Tech? I graduated from Georgia Tech. I went to the University of Georgia. Oh! So we're, we're not the same. No, no. I'm a sir. Yeah, that's fine. Welcome to Peru. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, of course, I know a lot about the history of Pensacola Christian. But uh, uh, I, know, I forgot the name of the founder. Horton. Horton, Dr. Horton. Horton. I haven't mentioned his name in years. <laughs> he's, he's retired now. Yeah, he's yeah. retired. But I, what did I say? I really respect and and uh, I'm very thankful for Pensacola uh, Christian College. I think it's just called Christian College. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say Baptist. No, no. No, that's just fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, and so uh, happy that you're coming to Peru. How many times have you come to Peru? I was born. I was born and raised here. Who was your parents? My parents live here in, in Pueblo Libre. They, they, they are not. I, I don't come from a safe family. I'm, I'm the first one who got saved. I went to Colegio San Andres, and I got saved. And, uh, and then I went to the States for my PhD. And then I, I entered Baptist Church when I was in Athens, Georgia. And uh, there was a small church, a Temple Baptist Church in Athens. 
And from there I went to Pittsburgh. The church changed so that fewer and fewer people were attending. And uh, the members who were faithful, people on the street always asking them for handouts. And so they were, they all agreed they were uncomfortable with the zone. So they sold it. And everybody went to different churches. They didn't just move the church, they just did. Because people were from all over the Atlanta area. I had friends in our church from, from all zones. Well, anyway, they don't exist. The, the church doesn't exist anymore. And so uh, there's where I got the world missions vision. That's when I heard from Matthew or Luke, Matthew 28, go and make disciples of all ethnic groups. It took me a little while to understand that that word nation really shouldn't say nation, it ought to say ethnic groups. Well, but I've got the message. I studied a little bit of Greek understand the Bible, and so I understand it was the word ethnic, eth ethnic. So, okay, I changed the picture. It's not just one Christian in every country, every nation, but it's every ethnic group, which is a whole different group. They just sound it. You know, you all understand that. And so, and so then I said, well, it's the command of the Lord, I'm going to obey. But where? So I'm an I'm engineer, I know how to read maps, and I, map was technical for me. So I had a map, much bigger than that one. I don't know where the big map is around here that I had. Anyway, I bought a map, and there's the, I put it on my wall in the little apartment that I had. And then I was praying, dear God, where? Where? Anywhere, tell me. Africa, Asia, anywhere. I was even willing to serve the Lord in the United States. Let the Lord decide. But I was single. And I could go anywhere. And I had a mechanical engineering degree while I was... Well, I already had my mechanical engineering degree. So I knew I could go about anywhere and get a job as a mechanical engineer from Georgia to <laughs> that's a good school for engineering. Yeah, yeah that's what it's for. <laughs> okay. what, what year was that when you... Well, I got there in 50 to 54. Uh, I will be 88 in a, <laughs> in a month. And that's about the same time where you surrendered to the Great Commission? Yeah, while well, I was in Georgia. Oh, in Georgia. See. Mm -hmm. But I said, now I've got to prepare. Well, that's all this testimony. Anyway, I've got to prepare. Now how? Should I finish my mechanical engineering, which I really like? Or should I go to seminary, which sounds a little bit logical? Well, I, I had to fast and pray. Don't tell all of your Baptist friends. I had to fast and pray. <laughs> For the Lord to say, where? Should I stay in Georgia Tech or should I go to a seminary? And uh, I kind of came up against uh, a deadline for camp. I had to pre-register for the next year. Well, I didn't have to, but it made it life harder if I didn't. Yeah. And so, Lord, please tell me, please tell me. And so I fasted and prayed. I said, I'm just going to, well, I didn't did not eat continually. I just didn't eat lunch or something like that. I don't remember all the details. But anyway, and the Lord clearly said, stay in Georgia Tech. Well, I'm very glad he did because I like engineering. And mm -hmm. I've used engineering all of the time after I left there. And, uh, and in those days, I wasn't thinking about what to do on the mission field. I just wanted to do God's will. My, my main, it's a 
preocupación, I won't say worry. Concern. Yeah. Concern, that's the word. Yeah. <laughs> Concern was uh, what to do, what to do. And so uh, when, I, when I made my decision, I went down in the front and a really good pastor. Anyway, I went, I was talking about that in the front. And I said, Brother Pastor uh, James, and I said, please, his, his last name would change. Yeah. I'm trying to think of his first name. No, no. It'll come to me later. Uh, anyway, I said, ask the people please to pray for me. Then I will know what God wants me to do. Because I want to do whatever God wants me to do. Period. That's it. And so that was my thing. And the first step was to stay in Georgia Tech. Yeah. Well, so that gave me another three years <laughs> to be deciding. And then I, I met some missionaries and uh, the missionaries, well, one of them was from Sudan and Africa. And I said, well, the Lord says to every ethnic group, how all the work men going on in Africa? I think he was with Sam, S S Sudan, Seam, Sudan Interior Mission. Now it's changed his name. You know the new name? I do. Sevino Internacional Misiones, I will say. Mis no letras. Porque están, they're in, they're in maybe 20 different countries now. And they have about 2,000 missionaries or something like that, more than BIMI. <laughs> well, gracias a Dios, BIMI is presently just about the biggest independent Baptist mission. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, and I said, well, I guess it, it's your, your country's been reached by now. Ooh, no. No. Well, I was using not very good biblical language in those days. I said, reached. <coughs> it's difficult, almost impossible to define reached. So, disciple is something different. Don't go to the Lord, just make disciples. Yeah. So, anyway, lately I'm saying disciple. Yeah. <coughs> In this it says, countries not discipled. <laughs> oh, okay. It says, says, ethnic groups not discipled. Mm -hmm. And it says, ethnic groups in Peru, not disciples. Yeah, and I, I like much better if they say disciples. Yeah. Well, whatever, I understand why they say reach, because it's the custom to say reach. When I've been with missionaries, I'll just, I'll, I'll do that way. I, I take, I say, rabbit trails where I say up in East Tennessee. Mm -hmm. so, because I've been with missionaries, came down, well, I can came down and went to a town and showed them over to mm -hmm. and then went back to Lima and they said, well, we reached another town. Mm -hmm. I've been in missionary work years, showing a movie in a town was not the way to get people saved or to disciple. The Lord said, disciple. One, one film is not disciple. I'm not discounting because I've seen people get saved and something like that, and then I have to go back to the Pueblo to, to disciple <laughs> because the person's interested or maybe even receive the Lord. So I've got to go uh, obey the Lord and disciple. It's a little bit easier if somebody else leads him to the Lord than I can, but whatever. And so, um, so anyway, make disciples. And so then, uh, yeah? You mean it hadn't been done in, in, in Sudan yet? Well, I guess obviously I better go to Sudan. Then I met another missionary from West Africa, in Nigeria, I think it was. Yes, Nigeria. And, well, how long have we been missionaries there? So many years. Well, have you, have you, I think I said reached. 
Have you made hmm. disciples in all of the tribes? In, no, I haven't even hardly begun. There must be a hundred hmm. tribes that don't have the one Christian, one worshiper. The Lord Jesus says, I'm seeking worshipers. Yeah. Not even one worshiper. I see, now I've got a problem. Should it be Nigeria? <laughs> well, the more I learned, the worse the news was. was you know. but now this thing says, just for Operation Joshua Project, Marshall Manos, 7,000 tribes that still don't have disciples. They, some people think they're rich, but they're not going to disciples, but whatever. And so then what am I going to do? So that's when I started praying on the map. Lord, where to go? I'll go anywhere, but I wasn't really concerned until I graduated. Now what am I going to do? Well, I guess I better go to seminary so I can be very prepared. And so then I went to Talbot Seminary in Los, in Los Angeles, in La Mirada, in Los mm -hmm. Angeles. When I went, they were in downtown Los Angeles. Talbot Seminary. Mm -hmm. Bow. I went to Los Angeles. Traditional, long-standing, good, fundamental, well, I even graduated with the with the person who was director for a while, Ron Cook, 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 not Ron Cook. Anyway, Cook. And so I'm forgetting names. Can you believe it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, so I went there, but they, I didn't feel like they were really preparing me to be a missionary. And so I started researching. And I found out the best graduate school, because I've already graduated from college, the best graduate school on level, on that level, on master's degree level, was Columbia, and then in those days, Columbia Bible College. It was all it's called Columbia Theological Seminary or something like that. I don't know, we had to change that name after I left. <laughs> Is that the one in Georgia? No, in, in Columbia, South Carolina. Oh, okay. Columbia, South Carolina. And their graduate school, well, the whole school, but especially the graduate school, nearly all of the professors, or at least 60% of the professors, had, uh, had, had experience on the mission field. The Bible in lots of countries, that was not what you're supposed to say. Mm -hmm. So graduate school, yeah. And then says, anyway, uh, so I was a year and a half in Talbot Seminary in Los Angeles. I think, yeah, because it was downtown Los Angeles. I taught uh, high school part time, well, during the day or something like that. I don't know. Isn't that something? write it all down, to try to remember it right. But whatever, I, I taught for a year uh, chemistry and, and physics and advanced algebra in, in Christian high school. Culver Academy is the name I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Brother Blanchard was the director of those days. Well, doctor. But uh, anyway, I enjoyed that teaching because I like science. And so then I went to Columbia Graduate School of Mission and got tired of studying. And so I'm not going to finish with the master's degree. And so then I said, I'm just, I'm just going to go to Peru. So the Lord said, Become to Peru. I never had met the missionary or a, or a, or a Native, I never knew a person from Peru before I, well, yeah, I did. Finally found a person who says, come to Peru and I'll meet you at the, at the airport. Well, I think I'll go on a ship. One of the, one of the, one of the ex-missionaries from your country says, if you can, take a ship. Because if you get on the airplane in your mind, 
we were just about a few hours from mm. home. Mm -hmm. You know, you go home. Mm. Well, mm. but if it took me actually just 21 days, <laughs> then I don't think I did. I just zoom home. Of course, I knew airplanes. When it was. My, my wife came four years before I did. We met in Peru. But she came four years before I did, and she came by plane. Did you ever hear of Goody Birds? DC-3s. Oh, three's. Three's. Yes. It's part of the way to the DC-3s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Called it Goody Bird. They couldn't hardly see those things. They would crash land into the into the ocean and sit there for a while. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't sink. That's something. I guess the wings were kind of waterproof or something. <laughs> the old things were Goody Birds. That's the unsinkable thing. <laughs> Yeah, I've got to go now. Now, where where did I leave off? Anyway, I finally met. No, at, <laughs> I don't know if you want my biography. You, you're writing it, you're listening. Okay, good. You should. Be. And if you'll write it, if you'll give me a copy, that'll help me a whole lot. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've got part of it written, but not all. In fact, I, I saw another rabbit trail. My master's degree, my late Dr. Mulholland, I mean, he, had a, he was a missionary. I says, can I write it as a book to publish? He says, yeah, go ahead and write it as a book. I'll just have to check to make sure it's all right, correct and everything. So he was my master's thesis, so what you call it? Advisor. Advisor, yeah. It's interesting, advisor, because he had the last word. <laughs> He was the boss. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, another rabbit trail. That was the first time I had experience with a computer. I didn't use it, but I found a lawyer. <coughs> if you have a light, light cough, breathe menthol. It calms the thing real nice. Well, anyway. What was the answer? Right. 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 Right.